Amber Poole, the lovely Chakra Diva. I am so excited to be with you today and having this conversation. Just for everybody out there, I love this woman. I think you have just such a beautiful, crystalline, powerful heart and life. And I just, I'm so glad that you're with us today because we want to hear about you. And in particular, because I know you've had kind of a weird, wacky life like I have. In particular, we want to talk about some of the experiences, the high strangeness, if you will, that you have had throughout your life and just kind of dig into some of that if you're open to it. I love it. First, I have to say thank you. Big thank you for allowing me to just sit here and be in the presence of Crystal Ann Compton oh because God. you are one of my favorite, favorite mentors. Same. Um, I'm so glad that we found each other. I think a yes. few years ago. A few years ago, but I just fantastic. You're my you're my friend, and I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just gonna let you, I'm gonna let you talk. You can start, and if I have sure. a question, I'll pop in. But I just really want to hear what you have to say. Sure. So um, let's let's go back to the beginning, right? Because that's where it all starts from. People always assume that because you're magical or mystical, you have seen stuff your whole entire life or that you've done stuff your whole entire life. Um, I didn't. I didn't have one of those. I had some, but not much. My thing when I was little, I loved church. Okay. You couldn't keep me away from church. And my mom would take me to church my best friend, she would, she's so funny. She's like, let's go to vacation Bible school so that we can just like hang out. I ditched her every time we went, because all I wanted to do was sing in the choir. I wanted to be connected because when your heart's open, I'm getting chills. It feels so good. Right? So one day my mom and I are at church and I'm looking at the pastor and I said, I cannot believe how green his aura is. I said the light around him. I didn't have the language for aura. And um, she said, what are you talking about? And she like squints and looks down. And I said, that big light that's coming from him. It was like this beautiful emerald green. And um, she said, I don't see anything. I'm like, how could you miss that? And it was my first time when I realized that people didn't see colors around people. I just thought it was a natural thing. So you had had previous to that, you had seen it. I always see colors. Okay. Yes. I look at somebody and I, I would always watch their colors and I never knew what it meant. It would, it would be blue or sometimes it would shift and go up. And I was always curious about it. So mom was like, you know, there's something, there's something with you. She's very much into angels. She would always teach me about the angels. But years ago growing up, we didn't have the language. We didn't have the resources. So she would say, Amber, you're very magical. I don't know what to do with you. So she put me in tarot card reading. We, we, love, a, we love a mom like that. Right. She's like, like, I'm trying. So I would sit in this class. It was like a metaphysical shop. Go in there. 40-year-old women are like throwing down tarot cards. They're smoking inside. And here I must have been 13. Oh. <laughs> Looking down going, what do I have to memorize these cards for? I don't understand it. So then she pulled me out of tarot and she's like, all right, well, maybe you need an Ouija board. Wow. So right, okay. there's like, she just doesn't know what to do with me. <laughs> she just knows that I'm very connected in. Jesus is my, is my guide, my man the whole time. That's who I would sit and talk to. Um, and I love just the connecting because it felt so good all the time. So she gives me a Ouija board. I invite some friends over, we're in my bedroom, and I come out and I tell her a story. I said, you know, there's there's these guys that are trying to come through. They got into a car accident. And my mom was like, what? That thing's real? Right? And I was like, I don't know. I'm just letting you know what I just spelled out on here with my friends. So then she took it. We always have like the story of the Ouija board. It always appears in the house. Like she couldn't throw it away. So she would hide it into the basement. We'd go into our next house and it would always just appear. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and she so, doesn't recall bringing it with and you didn't bring it oh, with? Oh, she did. She just, oh. yeah, she believed that she couldn't like throw it away. She couldn't trash it. Okay. So oh. she would always just like put it somewhere and I would go, mom, this board just appeared. <laughs> right. She's like, oh, and then she would move it somewhere else. Right. <laughs> so okay. I didn't touch it. So it was kind of like this. It was this fun thing in the house. Right. I didn't know that she was moving it. I just thought that it kept coming. And she was like, oh, no, what do I do? Okay. Right. Yeah. Amber's bringing people in. 
Um, so we moved to our second house and I was sitting on the bed one day channeling. I always channeled Jesus. I would write down, ask him questions, and I would always hear responses. My Clara audience was just, it was phenomenal. And um, it, it was the thing that I just, I did all the time. But in front of my bed was the closet. Okay. And the closet never felt good to me. Okay. Ever. And uh, one night I was sleeping in bed and I... I don't know, like, do you go into the dream state? You're moving up. I don't know what happens in there. But if it was a dream state, I saw this black mist come towards me as I'm laying in bed. And it leans over into me and I start choking in my sleep. Mm. Coughing, choking, tears are coming down. And I lean over to the side of my bed and I want to yell for my mom because I can see the hall and they have their door shut at the end of the hall. And I want to say, mom, help, but it never comes out. Instead, all of these tears are just coming out. And uh, in that moment, I decided to pray. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. I need help. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know, right? I'm little. I don't know what's going on. So I start praying, asking for help. And I saw this four-foot white light kind of... Um, like beautiful white light all coming out on every side. And as soon as it came next to me, whatever this darkness, this black mass was, let go and went away. And I was, I felt so good at that moment mm -hmm. that I asked for a second one. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> right. I was like, can I have another one? And I got another white light being four foot. You're like four foot. Why not? Um, kind of like circular, but it has all this light shining off of it. Mm -hmm. And I felt protected. I felt safe. And I knew from that moment on, no matter what I did, I was always protected and safe. So looking back, do you think those were angels? Do you think they were guides? Do you think they were ETs? Um, they're kind of short. They could be ETs. Who knows? Yeah, they're four foot. And it was just white light. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if that is an angel. Like my mom would always talk to me about the angels. Mm -hmm. There was no wings. There's no like you know, defined, I'm an angel form. Um, but it was just pure white light. I love it. So I always like when I'm stuck, or if I'm scared, or if I'm going into, um, like I sat with the paranormal group a few times. <laughs> yeah. Calling them in. Right. I call them in because I'm like, just come there, me. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> We're but going I, in together. I think it helps my work out a lot because I don't have that fear that something bad's going to happen. Right. Because I know that we are love, that we are light, that the light, all you have to do is ask and it's right there. Right? It never leaves your side. I love that. I have a couple yeah. of questions for you. Sure. Um, I mean, you might see me writing. I just want to make sure I get these questions in. You mentioned um, being able to bring in messages on the Ouija board uh, as mm -hmm. you're using the planchette. Did you also, because I know you're mediumistic, did you also feel something in addition to that? Could you sense them in any way? So all right, I'm going back to the memory of it. I don't think so. It's interesting to me because I didn't realize that I was a medium until my first um, healing. Okay. So I automatically, you know, I had a, um, an illness which pleathered me into feeling energy. And I thought, this is crazy. And I asked my stepmom to lay down. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And this was before I heard of the words Reiki, right? So 2012. Reiki is not popular. It's not on the internet everywhere. I'm Googling magical hands because I could feel something, right? Okay. I, okay. I didn't know what it was. Right. And I said, lay down. I don't know what I'm doing. And I start to move across her energy. And all of a sudden, I knew there was a man here. And I said, there's a man with us. And she's like, yes. I said, uh, he's your father. And I get to the train station and he's leaving the coins for you. And she said, yes, he always went to work on the train station and would bring us back coins. And it didn't occur to me in that moment that I'm a medium. Yeah. I just went, huh, that was cool. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got it. Right. That was right. neat. Let me do this again. So I wasn't, um, I didn't go in for classes so that it opens up my mediumship. I didn't realize I was a medium. Now when I do it, I feel, right? I can feel male females around. And then I go up in my head. Well, is this in family? Is this outside of family? Where does it fall in at? 
So did, have you over time with your mediumship created kind of a system for understanding that? And yep. did you, did you initiate that or did they initiate, like, is it a collaborative way? We, we talk a lot in, in our gr uh, groups and in our programs about identifying your psychic vocabulary and like how spirit talks to you and how spirit feels to you when spirit's giving you a message. And some of, sometimes we can initiate that vocabulary, but sometimes they do. So as you've developed this over time, I'm just wondering how it's come to you that you know that a male stands over here or that this presence or feeling is a female or a grandmother, et cetera. So I started to create with my, I always call them my team. And I didn't know necessarily who my team was at first. I would just say, hey, I want to communicate with you. Let's do this. And I started in regular conversations. So when a person talks to me, uh, no matter what, the, you know, um, they're talking about Thanksgiving, then I would put a mental image in my head as they're talking, what does Thanksgiving look like? Mm -hmm. And I would see the table with the, you know, the turkey on top and I would go, okay, Thanksgiving. Um, so I would always take the sentences of everybody that was talking and go, how can I condense that into a symbol? I love it. That's great. Put it in my head, right? Mm -hmm. You just kind of bank it. And it doesn't, you don't need to remember the symbol. That's the best part. You don't need to remember the symbol because when you're having conversation, it comes back up right. and it's like, oh, I knew that. I, I have that. Um, yesterday when I did one, I saw a Christmas tree and I said, well, this is weird. There's a Christmas tree. And she said, well, my mother passed on Christmas. And I'm like, but I don't think that's what it is. So sometimes there's like, I have to go, okay, which way are we going? Which direction are we going in? Um, I said, she keeps talking about the garland on the Christmas tree. And she said, oh, that's so funny. My mom hates garland, right? Mm -hmm. So she was implying about the Christmas tree and her husband got rid of the Christmas tree the week before because he doesn't want to put up Christmas trees because she's not there. Oh. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I feel like the symbol, like the symbol can just be a symbol unless I need something else to back it up. I need a second symbol to back up the first symbol. <laughs> got, it. got it. But you you have a sense that there's something more in that moment. And so you keep. I keep asking. Thinking. I'm like, give me something else. I need to know what is this? When we are open, like there's no limitations, right? We are the ones that limit ourselves. So when I can get quiet, I can know what's going on in my body. I can go out and say, okay, what are you trying to say to me? So I try to keep an open mind on everything. Even when I was doing healing, every time I step into the healing practice, I'm going to learn something new today, right? Spirit's going to mm -hmm. teach me something. I don't care that I've been doing it for years. I don't know everything. Spirit can always teach me something. Sure, right. So I try to keep an open mind on my symbols. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, yesterday when I was on the radio, I saw a grave graveyard and she's like, yeah, a lot of my family's over on the other side. But then I heard brother and she said, yes, we just found out that I have a brother. So I'm like, okay, the family's not all there. Got it. Right. So you need the background. You need more to come with it mm -hmm. to like understand sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think you can get so good in understanding your symbols that it's like just talking. <laughs> you know, I've I actually uh, perceived interdimensional energy trying to access that vocabulary. And it was, it was really kind of cool because it appeared in a holographic way. And they were kind of just moving through the different symbols and then selecting one that, like you said, I have banked over time, I've created my own vocabulary and then pulling it forward and offering it. So they, it, it seems to me that they actually access it to select the ones that make sense in order to communicate. And then if they can't, like if I haven't banked that particular one, they will offer a new one. And then mm -hmm. I have to do what you do and lean into it and try to figure out what they're trying to say. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting process, but it's all happening like in the light. Yes. In the field. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. And I always say like, when I go to do something, I'm going to be open. Okay. Put in as many images as you can allow me to feel your emotions, allow me to experience it. And I say, I always say, this is funny. Like ever since I started, I said, I'm not a medium. I'm just practicing, right? I'm just a practicing medium, which kind of gave me the slip to say, it's okay if I'm not right. It's right. okay. So I did that for a few years. And now I'm like, come on, I got this. <laughs> Give me some more. Give me another symbol in there. Come on. Something out. You're like the, <laughs> one of the very best mediums that I know. I mean, I recommended you for that show that once. I'm like, this oh, girl is good. Like you're you. fantastic. And it's because it's, it's, 
because I think you're connected to the purpose behind doing the work. And I've always thought mediumship and of course healing, it's a ministry. You're mm-hmm. delivering messages to the living, but you're also bringing through a healing and a communication for the dead. And so it's just yeah. a beautiful thing to do for both parties. And so you, you are connected to that. And I think that's why you're so powerful. My biggest thing is how can we connect to our higher selves? Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. Why does sure. that turn, why does that subject turn you on? It because it turns me on too. We don't, right? There's mm-hmm. a lot of people who are very, um, they're judgmental of other people's spaces and what goes on. And I think that it's a huge waste of time on a lot of levels when we could be getting work done. And we don't know what our work is. You don't know. If you connect mm-hmm. it to your light and your higher self, you'll have purpose. Um, a lot of clients come to me and they're like, I'm here on this earth, but I don't know why. Right. I don't know what my purpose is. And I'm like, well, let's figure it out. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm only here for, I'm hoping a hundred years. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I'm always like, we got to get it done. We have to get, move through. And I want to see what kind of world that creates because the world that we're living in, I'm not very happy in. Me neither. As a whole. So how do you shift that? Right. I think the answer is people need to connect into their soul Mm -hmm. and that's the missing link. We're like, so 3d that we forget that we're also with spirit too. A hundred percent. I mean, we, we have lost track of the fact that we're really just Mario in the game, you know, going around uh, the landscape, but we exist as the one that's playing the game. We exist as the creator of the game. We exist in an omnidimensional way outside of, the universal architecture, if you will, that's how powerful we are, but we operate in this life from this small little space. And you're exactly right. I think if we can shift our perspective into the higher and more expanded consciousness, oh my God, the things that we can do, which is why things like consciousness experiments, here's what I'm into. Okay. (laughs) Let me just tell tell you, I am into the scriptural uh, evidence and principle that where two or more are gathered, their God is right in the midst of them. That's a powerful scripture. And I'm really interested in the scripture where Jesus says, if you and somebody else agrees on something, your father in heaven, and I paraphrase, is compelled to do it. Like, and it doesn't really matter, actually, I believe. It really doesn't matter what we agree on. And I think there are plenty of people out here, especially on social media, agreeing to all kinds of crazy things. And this is why we're creating this space because social media is 4D. We could talk about that later, but imagine the power if we got conscious to who we really are. And then just you and me made an agreement about ushering in the light. Mm -hmm. Our father in heaven, source energy is compelled to do it. And so I'm really interested in agreements and I'm really interested in circles of like-minded people creating the conditions, heaven on earth that we want to seek. Absolutely. And that's exactly what it is. Heaven is on earth. There are so many different dimensions as I want to see it. Um, Let me tell you a story. Can I tell you a story? I I love a story. (laughs) So I had a client come in to me. So this guy comes in and he says, this is my wife. I don't know what's wrong with her. You got to fix her. His words. She has a beanie on her head. She's not looking up at me. She's looking down. Uh, She didn't even talk to me. She just went over to my massage table and she laid down. And I was like, well, this is weird. This is very, very strange. So, you know me, I just start working. I'm like, okay, see what we have going on today. And as I'm going up her chakras, I heard who killed Kenny. And I thought she was a South Park fan. So here I am going to talk to somebody who, I don't know, haven't had any conversation. And I said, who killed Kenny? Like, we're going to talk about South Park. And she goes, I don't know. And I went, well, pause. What do you mean you don't know? She said, that's my cousin. We all know who killed Kenny. Oh, okay. So I was like, oh my God. (laughs) Well, what do I do about this? And I started to see pictures come across my head. So a car backed up. I wish I saw the license plate. Like knowing now I could have like zoomed in. I hear doors shutting. They're on a, a road where he's fishing. So there's just a bunch of water over here fishing. And the next thing I know, because he's shown it from his perspective, I hear a splash. And then I heard it again, who killed Kenny? 
So I had this spirit who was like stuck, right? Who's showing me what happened um, and not obviously in a good place. And here this woman is <laughs> not communicating with me really, not looking around, feeling really depressed. And I think she was holding on to his his loneliness, his depression of what happened. And I turn around to my spirit team and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, what do I do right now? And I said, is there anybody over there that can help? And if you can imagine like a line in the sky, I saw a hand dip down and pull through this body, this being Kenny through this line. And I knew that it was a woman. So what had been mother, grandmother, or something like that, who stepped into the light, all right? And it was the most, one of the most coolest, you know, healings that I, I got to witness. And she felt so much lighter after that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if we knew mm -hmm. what's going on in our energy body, if we mm -hmm. knew what we attract, if we knew how to handle it, we would be different people. Mm -hmm. Right. It wouldn't just be, oh, this person spit on me and I'm how it works. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I really love tuning into your higher self. Right. I don't know everything. My physical self, I don't know everything. I have to keep asking spirit for it. Um, so it, it was I was just a very magical experience yeah. of how she can feel better and how he got to go into the light on the other side. It's one of the things that I like to do. Why why we should help spirit? Why should we should also help, you know, the people who mm -hmm. are here in the 3D for sure. So this kind of leads us nicely into soul rescue, which mm -hmm. I assume and and I've got a couple of books over there uh, associated with Bob Monroe who is the grandfather of the OBE and the Monroe Institute, but some of his students have developed kind of teams of people who go into the astral, really 4D, I think is where they go to find these spirits who have not crossed or these spirits who might be stuck. Uh, I don't know about looping, but stuck spirits or spirits that are unhappy and try to rescue them, meaning bring somebody in and cross them over. So is that your perception of what soul rescue is? And do you do this kind of work? Um, I do do this kind of work. There are different, I, I approach it all differently. Like in that case, I ask somebody for help. Um, you know, the new age thing is to build a white light and have everybody move over. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't always work. Okay. You have to talk to mm -hmm. the person um, and have communication with them. That's very important. Like, why are they here? What did they need? It bothers me to great deals when I hear a spirit say, help me. Like that just tugs at my strings. Cause I'm like, why, why are you here? What's going on? Um, so sometimes I do it differently. It depends on the situation. I had one lady who was laying on my bed and I was channeling and the energy starts to shift. So her hands are going back and forth. Her feet are going back and forth. And she starts to shape. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. Her back's coming up to the sky and I'm freaking out. Mm -hmm. Right. I am freaking out um, because she told me before she came in that there was a spirit in her house. And she said, you can have me. She said that to the spirit or the spirit? Yes. Yeah. No, oh, she said oh. that to the spirit. Okay. She didn't like having a spirit in her house. And she's like, what do you want? You can have me. She tells me it's just a person with like no self-esteem. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So anyhow, so she's shaking and moving and I'm freaking out because I'm like, I've never seen this one before. And I turn over and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And what I heard was work with her shadow, work with her shadow. So it wasn't necessarily that I was trying to get that spirit over to the other side. But when I worked with her and what I like to do is work with archetypes. So if her archetypes in the shadow, then what can we do to bring it to the light? When she changed her frequency, that spirit couldn't hold on anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how the situation is. Um, I like to have communication across the board and try to figure out why they're here, what their reasoning is, what they need. Um, well, what do you do if, um, if you encounter a hostile spirit? Because I've experienced 4D 
ghosts who are staying close to earth or proximate to earth because they like the baser energies of this or they have malicious intent. Yeah. So how do you handle a spirit like that? Suck your energy out. Mm -hmm. I had one ghost who didn't like me because he kept calling me a witch. <laughs> and I was like, what? As soon as I heard it, I was like, I'm not a witch. Like, what? What are you talking about? But that's his his perception of what it is. And anyhow, um, some of them you can't, you cannot negotiate, you cannot talk with. I always ask the guides, can you do something with his soul? Can you move him out? Um, and other times I had one situation where it just wasn't moving. Like, what do you do when it doesn't move? I can tell you black salt is amazing, right? Okay. So depending upon if it's in your house or in your space, you can always put black salt around you. That helps. Um, when you are in your power, mm -hmm. I think that's not negotiable. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. Like, I hate to be all Christian all the time, but I mean, I am, I, I consider myself a mystical Christian, but John 1, 1 talks about the quality of the light. The light shines into the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. Like the, and truly when you move into the meaning of that scripture, the darkness is antagonized by the light. The darkness cannot stand to be around it. And so if you, as the occupant of the space, the house where some of this activity is, if you mind your frequency and your vibration and your light and your love, if you are embodying that and aligned with higher self, they don't want to, they don't want any part of you. It has been a long time <laughs> since I've had a spirit amble into my house and knock around or make any kind of trouble, a shadow being any kind of a negative being. It's been a really long time because my practice is around how can I connect? How yes. can I fill up with that? And then just be that, right? So out of all of my experience being an energy healer, having a physical practice, I would have all these people come in and tell me about their negative house and the bad things that are going on. And I'm like, well, I've never had any of those issues. And here I am, you know, just bringing in the light over and over and over. And some people, I don't think they can handle that frequency at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. They're like knocked down. So yeah. that's why the black salt works. That's why other practices, sometimes it's a mental thing that you have to get in when you see things um, to happen. Sometimes they have to step into their own gifts, Crystal. Like mm -hmm. they are a medium and they're trying to go, no, I don't mm -hmm. want to be a medium. Well, we have to acknowledge that too, right? Right. Yeah, of course. If um, they're if they're a medium, they're going to be attracting spirits yes. who can see that they're a medium. Yes. So it depends. I think it, it depends on the situation. Like I said, ever since that one incident when I was a kid and I asked for light and I knew it was there, like I know no matter what happens, no matter what person is twisting on my table, that I am going to be okay. <laughs> yes. That this is a safe space. We had, um, there's a paranormal investigator group mm -hmm. and they came into my building and the building's really old. So they would investigate every single office around there. But when they came into my building, like my room, they all received messages from their loved ones. Hmm. And I think it's because that's all I channeled. Like that's all I created in that space. So I wonder for other people, what are they creating in their space? Yes. What energy are they asking for? Mm -hmm. Because if you walk outside my room, it wasn't very fun. Right. <laughs> right. But if you're in there, it was a really nice space. <laughs> that's really interesting. And I actually, one of the things I would say about you is that you have the spiritual gift of hospitality, which is different than the traditional interpretation. For me, the gift of hospitality is the ability to embody the higher frequency and to change spaces and people and moods just by being you, just by being you, you're, you're able to make people feel better and also open up all these beautiful kind of energies and spaces. So you remind me of somebody that I knew in Hawaii who uh, was a kahu priestess and she did many magical things and still does. But when she cleared a room and like, and she would clear stadiums, you know, she would clear churches and things like that. When she cleared things, all she did was get into alignment prime through whatever way worked for her and then just walk through just being the light and every darker thing, just like peace out. I can't do it. This is not conducive to what makes me feel good. And so she would clear it just by being present in that way, which sounds a lot like what you do as well. 
So I love to work on my aura. I like to make it like really, really big. Well, let's talk about how you do that. I'm sure, sure. everybody would want to do that. Um, well, there's two things that I do. Number one is I always move my energy through the chakras. Like the chakras to me are, you. there's so much information and imprints that are held in your chakras if you're trying to heal yourself or if you're trying to move mountains, right? So I take the energy from the ground, I move it up, I swirl it around me until I am physically moving back and forth. So that may take me, sometimes it takes me 20 minutes. Other days it's super fast. And then I just walk around, right? I go into, so I went into the Royal Farms down the street and everybody will look at you. When your aura is like high vibe, it's like you have something and everybody's mm -hmm. staring at you. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what's wrong with me? Did I do my hair right? What, what's going on here? Like, why am I attracting so much attention? When your vibration's down low, then it's like people can walk on you, right? It's not mm -hmm. existent. Gratitude. Gratitude is always the attitude. Um, when I was going through depression after I had my two kids, I was in such a state waking up with two kids. They're 16 months apart. And so <laughs> I was like up at two, up at five, whatever. And it got me into a really, really negative state. And one day I said, I'm going to just start a gratitude list and we'll see where it goes. And the only thing I wrote down was coffee. <laughs> <laughs> number one, I'm, I'm, grateful, I'm grateful for coffee myself. <laughs> <laughs> number two, coffee. Number three. And my husband in bed, he said, did I make that list? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't have my husband I, on there. I forgot I my have, husband. <laughs> I just had coffee on there. <laughs> but I love it because these are possible things. Sometimes when yes. people are trying to manifest, they're like, their gratitude is for world world peace or for things that they don't actually feel like. But if you're starting with coffee, it's possible. <laughs> and you, you get to have it every day. And I'm yes. really grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. And you can hold that. And the other thing is some people want to hold this big space and they can't hold a big space because they're not used to expanding their aura out all the time. So they might want to change the world. They might want to do different things. But unless they're big in energy field, it doesn't go very far. Right. So I always recommend working on your aura expand and practicing it, right? We would do classes where we would pull our aura in tight. It's the visualization. You pull your aura in really, really tight and then expanding it out really, really big. And if you were standing in front of me, I would walk over to you, put my hands up and keep going back until I couldn't feel your energy anymore. And that's how we could tell how far our aura was. Um, yeah. And fun. And it's mm -hmm. fun, you know, because everybody loves to feel their aura and see what their energy is and what colors are coming through. So that's another one of the ways that you can expand your aura. I um, love that. Can you can you see auras remotely or digitally? Like if 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 you were on with somebody on Zoom or like we are now, can you see their aura through this? Sure. I have camera? to like stare at you. So it's here's the thing, Crystal Ann Compton. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I can. So I can normally, um, your background is kind of distorting me when it I, is, yeah, when I yeah. look at the colors. Um, but I also see people. So people will change, like they'll visually change into other people. I have mm -hmm. found out when I'm, when mm -hmm. zoom mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait a minute, what? I've seen that too. <laughs> yeah. Right. I go up forward and I go back. So I'm like, what is that? Mm -hmm. How come they look so different? Mm -hmm. And what I found out is that it's not always spirit, right? It's mm -hmm. not always, everybody always says it's a deceased person attached to them, but it's not always. It could be one of their past lives coming through mm -hmm. and activating, right? That's why I really always stare. I'm like, who was she? What mm -hmm. was she doing? Um, and I love that because I think all of our past lives are working together in this very moment. They all, especially the things that are um, unhealed, mm -hmm. They come through too because they're trying to be healed in this lifetime. So when I stare at people on Zoom, I get different things. It depends on your background. Like your background's extremely busy right now. Yeah. Um, because I don't have a feel like some people when they're tuning into their gifts might mm -hmm. feel a color mm -hmm. and might not necessarily see a color. And that's just as valid to feel it. Yes. However you feel it or sense it, however you feel it. Like some people think you have to see with your eyeballs, but you can mm -hmm. very often sense any, anything you sense is, is, is you're still imaging it. It's just right. not in the traditional way. Yeah. When we do um, my classes, I make everybody close their eyes mm -hmm. because it takes out their main sense so that they can experience 
the other things, the other senses. You know, what are you feeling? What does it look like? When I'm scanning people's energy fields, I know emotions very well. So I go through like a little chart. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we start at the bottom. Is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it depression? And I keep going up until I feel whatever emotion is attached within their chakras. I don't see it. It doesn't, um, but your gifts show up in all different ways. I mean, it's not just one thing. I had a, um, a session one day who I was feeling his back and all of a sudden I felt an object in his back. And I was like, that's weird. I've never had an object in somebody's aura. And I went to go pull it. And when I pulled it, him who can't see me because he's sitting up, I'm working on his back, went, how? And he leaned forward. Hmm. And I was like, what the heck is that? Right? So here I am. And it became such a real thing. It looked like an anchor that was stuck in the back. And when I kept questioning it, it was his ex-wife throwing Ooh. darts at him. Like, Ooh. oh, it was bad. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, we found a lot of it, but he could experience it. He could feel it on the other side. It's one of his gifts. It's one of his sensitivities. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm like, what do I do with this thing? <laughs> <laughs> How do I get this? Thing? Yeah, that, that was the first thing I did. I just pulled. Right. <laughs> you can't pull. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we have to go through, you know, figure out why, what's going on. Right. Um, but it depends, like, I never try to close myself down to anything, right? Your gifts will come in in all different ways, all different ways. Yes. So it's kind of like, what am, what am I experiencing today? It, it makes life new again. Yes. You know? And, so it, and, and, and playful and fun. It's exciting. Yes. Yeah. And it's if like, you come at it with that, uh, if you come at it with that attitude of, I'm having fun. Like I'm just mm -hmm. adventuring with spirit. It's, mm -hmm. it opens it up even more when you have that kind of a playful energy. Yeah. I want to find out what's going on today, right. what you have in your field, because I won't ever be able to, like, I think there's so much that can be in our fields that we're not aware of, you know, like anchors, <laughs> <laughs> objects just randomly put there. Right. Um, it, besides people or ghosts or entities and things like that. So I always went into every session going, what's new? Mm -hmm. Spirit, tell me, what are we going to find today? What are we going to do? I think it, it's such an important lesson too, like with cords and attachments, because when I see a cord, I'm always like, well, I'm going to sever that cord, but not every cord ought to be severed. And so actually asking the object or asking the cord, what do you want? Do you want to move? Do you want to shift? Do you want to dissolve? Do you want to stay in place? Is it necessary? Like asking those questions, getting the answers and then doing the work is so important because some people, and I learned from a mentor in Colorado who didn't like ever severing cords because I learned from my priestess friend to sever them. And she's like hand movements, knives and spirit, and like just cut it, which yeah. is what I would always do. But he's like, I don't like to cut it. I like to reach over and unhook the cord so that it's gentle because sometimes, are you okay? I'm looking for some. Go ahead. Okay. Because That's sometimes, right. and just like very gently unhook the cord because sometimes when you sever like that, well, almost always when you sever like that, if it's a, if it's a substantial cord, whoever it's attached to feels it, mm -hmm. which is why it's so common when you're finally over it with somebody and you've cut all those cords and they feel it, then they call you and they start to reinitiate the drama or reinitiate the relationship because they felt it when yep. you cut it. So just, I'm just going to unhook that real gentle and just let it go. Yeah. Um, so I dated this guy maybe four years, high school, right? Four mm -hmm. years in high school. Mm -hmm. I met my husband. I met my husband in 12th grade. So we've been together for 20 years. But wow. um, before that, I dated somebody for four years. And even as adults, so interestingly, I met my husband as I was dating this guy, mm -hmm. which sounds terrible, but he was walking on the street and I heard a voice in my head pick him up. So as I was driving, I turned mm -hmm. around on the street and I'm like, hey, do you want to ride? No, -uh. that is, yeah. <laughs> wow. I met okay. my husband. All right. Because this voice told me to. So that's what I did. Right. <laughs> Intuitive little 17 year old me. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, yes. And I actually didn't call him because he didn't have a car. And my thing was, you have to have a car. Three months later, my girlfriend met a guy and she says, hey, I'm going to go to this party. Do you want to come? And I said, yeah, let's go. So I went to the party and 
my husband went to the party too. We didn't recognize each other. He had a car. <laughs> so I was like, oh, here's my phone number. And we fell in love like instantly, instantly that day. Um, so as far as this other guy, he met his wife now who he's been with for 20 years as well. Wow. <laughs> The problem is, and we would crisscross paths, like all of a sudden I'm going to the gas station and I would see him. I would go to a football game and I would see him. Mm. We were in California and I saw him. What are the chances? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I kept having these dreams. He would come to me and tell me what his relationship was doing. I'm getting married. I'm having kids. And I'm like, what is going on here? Mm -hmm. So I got really, really quiet and I talked to spirit and I said, if there's something that needs to be healed or I need to say, I'm sorry for something, I want you to put him in my space. Mm -hmm. Not two weeks later, I'm at the grocery store, same grocery store I've been to for <laughs> 10 years now. <laughs> and I ran right into him. And the first thing I said when I saw him was, I'm really sorry for anything I've ever done. Now I haven't seen him in 20 years, like had a, a conversation. We were just in passing. And he looked at me like I had 10 heads, <laughs> but I'm like, I called you here because of your spirit, your spirit. I've called this meeting today. <laughs> yes. Your spirit keeps coming to me. So we talked for two hours in the middle of a grocery store and then he left. I had his spirit come to me one more time and I was like, no, we're done. All right. I said it, I cut cords and I release. And I could see it like a meeting of him saying, okay, thank you for being in my life. And I was like, thank you. Agreement done. Choo -choo. And that was it. And I haven't seen him since. And everything's been quiet. <laughs> so do you think that he was a, just attaching, continued yes. to attach cords? Yeah. And you, Over, you in the, in, even if he's not doing it in the conscious world, he's doing it obviously in the spirit world. His spirit right. is coming over and kept coming in and coming and just updating, which is weird. Right. Uh, just right? so you know. Just so you know, New I'm going to get event. married. Right. I'm like, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, did I ever tell you the story of my ex who would come through the cords, but he would send an actual entity that not just I saw with my clairvoyance, oh, my, my daughter saw this entity with her eyeballs, mm -hmm. a, a dude I was dating saw this entity, my husband saw this entity, and it always looked the same. The entity was dressed as this man used to dress. He, he liked to ride a motorcycle, so he had like a leather jacket this entity, jeans and, and motorcycle boots, but his head looked like a big balloon head, like a circular mm -hmm. balloon head. And he had this weird big smile. It was just a clown head. It was very disturbing. And the first time I ever saw it, um, we were still kind of together, but we were having a conflict, which was every other day. And this being just walked into my bedroom, like dressed up like that with this big old clown head and scared the hell out of me. I'm like, mm -hmm. and then my daughter saw him in the house as well. I was dating this one guy who was a former cop and, and fed. So really strong, very alpha guy. And he looked over me, over at me in the car. And he was like, oh, because right next to my head was this big balloon head. And then my husband saw him when I was out of town. I went to spiritualist camp. It was really fun. My husband was installing a kitchen when we were first together and so it was still a little bit active with this person. He just kept reattaching the cords. And my husband looked up at the stairs because he heard something. And this being was just at the top of the stairs with his head. And my husband, he's the least curious person in the world. I'm like, he, you see spirits, but he doesn't believe in any of it. But I'm like, but you see spirits. But he just looked at him and he was just like, whatever. I got, I got work to do. <laughs> so oh continued on. But that guy reattached over and over and over. And I always knew he was mad at me because this entity would come on through. So that took a lot of energetic maintenance and management. Like I was always cutting those cords. Interesting. Yeah. You never know. And you never know what somebody's sending through a cord now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's why I like to, so, you know, I never like to talk to somebody in the physical. <laughs> Because <laughs> sometimes you're not going to get your way anyway. Right. So I like to go up into the spirit world and see what their soul is doing, see how things are. What do they have to say? What's going on? And sometimes I'm surprised by what comes through or what shows up. Um, other times I met, I met this woman who used to have an entity who bothered her all the time. And then she declared herself, right? She was like, look, you can't have any part of me. This is what I'm going to do. 
And then the entity became her like sidekick, right? So would support Mm -hmm. her. So when she got angry at people, it did things to other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, I've never even seen that. Like that Mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. You know, here are the entities trying to attack or attach or whatever it's trying to do. And she's still in her power. And then all of a sudden, it's like, who you need me to go get? (laughs) Right, right. <laughs> what you need me to do. So mm-hmm. I always think about that when I'm, because she had no idea. Mm-hmm. Right. And I said, you have to got to control your, your powers and be mindful of how you are approaching people, attacking people, mm-hmm. even if it's verbally, because mm-hmm. I mean, you got some extra help. You got some backup. You got some backup. But that's not a good backup to have. Mm-mm-mm-mm. No, not at all. Traveling the cords. Yeah. And it's so interesting because I think, pe- well, I know people are so unaware that they have cords and sometimes mm-hmm. so many cords and that the purpose of the cord is to transfer energy and energy communicates and talks. But if you ever notice throughout your day that all of a sudden your mood changes or all of a sudden you're having a pain in your back or all of a sudden you're thinking in a particular way or about a particular person, a lot of times it's because they're sending you this energy through the courts consciously or unconsciously on their part and you're receiving it as kind of a mini detonation in your field Mm -hmm. and you're affected by it. And so if you don't have some kind of a practice of clearing your aura, brightening your aura, strengthening your field and severing everything that doesn't serve, well, then you ought to get one, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and learn, you know, and that's like the biggest thing. All you have to do is learn your intuition. And I don't know why that is such a turnoff or people people go, no, I don't know if I should do that. I'm like, right. please do that. Because that's how you get in alignment. You know, like that's what we need. Right. It can tell you what food to eat, how to support your body, oh, to yes. have in clarity of your job, what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go. It just floors. I'm like, just get in alignment. Open up your intuition. That's what we need to do. And that's why I love your classes because so many people need to learn how. They need Mm -hmm. to learn who are the angels, who are the sending masters, how to connect. And that's why you provide such valuable tools to everybody out there. You know, thank you. Yeah, they have to get in alignment. When I'm clearing out people's chakras, I get tons of junk, right? And they said, oh, well, that's old. I'm like, that still needs to be taken care of. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. You have to do the work. You have to let go of it. You have to release it. Hello. You're M- most of your stuff is old. <laughs> most of your stuff. And most people don't want to look at it. And it's taking mm-hmm. up actual space in your energy, which then crystallizes, physicalizes into your body somehow. It starts yeah. in the energy. So if it's collecting there, taking up space, that means there's no space for the light. There's no space for all the other good transformative things because you're carrying this stuff inside of your system. Yes. And some people don't want to get rid of it. They want to hold on to their grief. They want to hold on to um, their sadness. Who are they going to be without their sadness? Right. Their story. Yes. How do Mm -hmm. I experience that? You know, I'm stuck in the old story of having my partner come back to me. I really miss my partner and I can't move on in life because I need the old story. Right. Right. You only got a hundred years. (laughs) <laughs> right, that's what I keep going back to. Right. So the day that uh, I don't know what happened, I was walking completely blacked out. Right, walking blacked out, fell over, and I heard a voice. And this is what activated my gifts again. I heard a voice. My first thing, I'm in the blackness. I'm in a void, and I said, "Am I dead?" And I heard no. And I said, "Am I going to be good again?" I heard yes. And I was kind of like snippy. I'm like, "Well, that's all I need to know. I don't need to talk to you anymore." Right. Like that's it. But then I was shown, I had my daughter screaming at me. My husband's yelling at me, Amber, what's wrong? I can't talk. I can't move. You lift me up. I'm puking everywhere. I have no uh, control of my body whatsoever. Call an ambulance comes in. But what I saw in that moment was that my husband walked away. My daughter walked away and they were showing me without emotion that they're just players in my life. And it's a different uh, perception than what we have because we're so attached to everybody. But I knew in that moment that they were there for my soul's growth. And it made me shift everything that I thought about life (laughs) because I was like, wait a minute, everything's here to support me. Everything's here in my life to get me into alignment. So I need to do the work. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what opened my out-of-body experiences. I started floating that day. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm definitely dying. I got to swim <laughs> back into my body. Um, but that's really what opened up all of my, my gifts again, because I closed them down. You know, you turn into a teenager and you're like, I had people make fun of me. You know, no, oh, she talks to angels. She talks to Jesus, right? Yeah, people oh, yeah. weren't, they weren't into it. And I had one of my clients actually, she saw me and she said, it's so funny because I used to make fun of you in middle school and now I come to see you. <laughs> and I thought that is just amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. So, yeah. Wow. What an love interesting and <laughs> fantastic life that you've had. And um, I just really... I see you on a stage. <laughs> like I feel like you're such a motivator and an inspirer and all of these things, these evidences of spirit, like auras and chakras and, yeah. and spirits and things of that nature. It's so interesting and exciting, but I love that your, your main message is about that connection. Really, it's about God and the mm -hmm. God in you and how to live a life present in that way and what a magical life it can be. And I tend to consider gifts and things kind of like, or I compare them to lights in a house okay. that are turned on by your frequency. And so the more you pay attention to what brings you joy and what brings you love and what fills you up in this way, your frequency rises and the lights start to come on. Yes. Truly, the more joyful you are, the more meaningful, purposeful you are in your life, the more you become psychic. The more you start to see colors around people, the more you see an, um, an anchor in somebody's back. These things, just the lights, it's the house, all of it turning on. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So let me ask you, do you still currently practice? Do you still have clients? Do you still take clients? Because I'm sure after listening to this, many people will want to know how to reach you. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you go to the chakradiva.com, I still have lots of sessions. Everything's done through Zoom. I closed down my physical office um, last year because of COVID and all that good stuff. And I'm having a lot of fun going online and That's doing fun. things. Um, I draw out your little gingerbread girl or boy with your seven chakras that go through it. And I start to talk about the things that you're holding on to and how to release. So I still do sessions as well. Um, I do a lot of things. I clear out houses. I can look at a house and tell you where the energy is, what's going on. It's interesting because there's no... Um, there's no like barriers between space and time, right? So even if I'm having a conversation with you and I'm like, well, I'm going through your house, I'm really going through your house. I'm connecting yeah. in, I'm talking to the entities there or whatever energies may be present in your home. Um, yeah, I can do all of that. I love well, doing all of that. So when somebody books with you, they're not necessarily just booking like a chakra alignment. They're booking a session with Amber Poole. And so it could get wacky. It, <laughs> it can get, get wacky. <laughs> <laughs> really interesting. And so be prepared for that, right? You never know. Yeah, you never know, right? Because I'm always open. I'm like, whatever spirit has to say, that's where we're going. And um, it's always a beautiful thing because something good comes out of it. It's not like we, if you go to some healers and you're like, oh, there's so much burden on me. I, she laid down my cards and the next six months look terrible. No, none of that, right? It's like, how can you get in alignment with your soul? How can you heal? That is my only purpose. And if you need healing from your loved ones, that's who we're going to talk to because it will heal you. Oh, I love it. So besides the chakradiva.com and link in the description, wherever you're listening or watching this, you can reach out to Amber. Are there any other places that people can find you? Podcasts, radio shows, anything else? Or? Radio shows, I heart uh, radio every Thursday. So that's A1R radio, I believe it is. It's at Psychic Radio. So you can go to the Facebook page, A1R Radio, and all of a sudden you'll see me on Thursday nights at nine o'clock. I do take calls. Um, I will run through your chakras and tell you what I get. Really? People can call in and, and, and hear from you? About all throughout them? the world. Wow. Australia, if you're in Europe, it doesn't matter where you are. You can just call in. My time is always the same, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Chakra Diva Show. Because, you know, that's how you know it's me. <laughs> Awesome. Yes. And Facebook. I love Facebook because okay. that's like the easiest way for me to communicate with other people. So just look up the Chakra Diva on Facebook and they can find it. you. I'm there too. Thank you so much. Let's end with just a little fun thing. Um, 
if you're if you want to, if it feels good to you. <laughs> let's look forward into 2022 mm -hmm. and let's see what kind of energy wow. is coming through for the planet and the people. What do you feel? And it can, you know, it, even if it's something that's challenging, it's still good. So yeah, I think we're going to be in a time of clearing up. That's the best way I can say it. Um, when I close my eyes, I always look at crystals. I love working with crystals. Um, and black tourmaline is the crystal for the year. It's still releasing negativity. It's cleaning up. It's things coming up to the surface. Um, I think that we need more light workers for people to stand in their power. It's going to be a huge thing for next year. Um, and to have awareness of arguing and those types of things to mm -hmm. the surface. Um, but yes, if you're looking at it energetically, I'm not looking at it like we're going to have a love light year. Okay. That's not what shows up for me. What shows up for me is more people uniting, more people coming together. Um, and we need people on the forefront, light workers, people who actually stand in love and connect in to help shine. So I'm not feeling a hundred percent. Yay. Let's go. This is great. I feel like we're still working, working through the mud a little bit. Yeah. which is what we need in order to shift. We have 100%. to shift old paradigms and old belief mm -hmm. systems that are just, they're not going to work. No, it's time for them to go and we they're, have to create them. But yes. anger and animosity and divisiveness is not going to create anything of love. So yeah. it really is a time of personal responsibility and accountability for the spiritual mm -hmm. heart-oriented person to be very mindful and intentional about what they are thinking about and what they are allowing themselves to feel because that is how you create and manifest what's yes. showing up on the screen of life. We are in process. I totally agree. Meaning we're still doing it. We're still trudging. We're still, yeah. but we are moving forward. When do you, when do you sense that it kind of opens up energetically so that we as humans are experiencing kind of a lighter energy? What do you think? And it's okay. I, do, I just went through the timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, 27 actually highlights for me. Me too. 27, 28. Yes. Yes. And I mean, nobody wants to hear it. <laughs> no, they don't. That's why I was like, oh, I mean, no. <laughs> I was like, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting to. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's hard. I mean, things are going to crumble. Like mm -hmm. old structures that we have, they're just not going to be supportive. And that's hard for people to grasp. They want to still hold on to what they're used to, have their safety net. Your safety net is your light. Your safety net is turning to God and saying, hey, what can we do to elevate this? Like it's not working out for everybody anymore. Mm -hmm. What can we do to become an alignment? Personal accountability is a huge thing, mm -hmm. right? Whatever you say is an agreement with the universe. As soon as it comes out of your mouth, you're making a pack. So people need to be aware of that. 100%. We are magicians. We are manifesting yes. all the time. Absolutely. Hello. So what do you want to create? Let's get intentional about it. Yep. You know, like my son is like, I just want to fly, mom. And I'm like, well, keep, keep manifesting it. Keep working on it. That's how you get there. Yes, yes. absolutely. Well, this has been so fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here and talking with me today. I just love you truly, madly, and deeply. And mm -hmm. um, everybody check her out, thechakradiva.com, link in the description. And if I were you looking for a spiritual practitioner, let me tell you, I would look up Amber Poole, the Chakra Diva. Thank you. All right. Very much. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye.